In this quick and easy tutorial, I'm going to show you not one, but four amazing video scribe hacks and tips that will level up your animations. And all of them are easier than you think. So watch this video to the end and try them for yourself. Hack number one is the blackboard effect. Hack number two is to overlay your videos with animations. Hack number three is unlimited custom images. And hack number four is how to erase and go. Now before we dive right into it, I want to ask you a question. I know some of you already have animated channels and some of you might be thinking about creating one. The question is, what is your favourite thing about animated explainer videos? Maybe you find them easy to watch or they help you understand things in a simpler way. Maybe it's because you don't have to show your face or maybe, like me, you're not very artistic and you can hide that with software like Videoscribe. Let me know in the comments below. Now, speaking of Videoscribe, I love this software. It's simple and powerful when it comes to creating animated videos, even if you've got no experience. And if you watch to the end, I'm gonna tell you where you can find several training courses for Videoscribe that are absolutely free. Hack one is how to create a blackboard video using Videoscribe. Now, traditionally, Videoscribe is seen as a whiteboard animation software, but did you know you can also create that chalkboard or blackboard effect? just to add something different to your videos. And this is how. So the first thing we want to do is look at the background. Now, as you can see, we've just got a plain white background. If we click on this icon at the top of the screen, this background options paintbrush, then we've got various different effects that we can do. We can add a little bit of texture, we can add a vignette, and we can add some color. Now we're actually gonna change the texture to this one in the top right hand corner. And we're then gonna click on change background color, and we're gonna change it to a dark gray. So as you can see, this is looking already a little bit more like a chalkboard. Now the problem that we've got is when we add certain images. Let's for example say that we add this video scribe logo. Now as you can see, the black that's on there just fades out. You can just see the blue triangles and to be honest, it doesn't look like anything that would be written on a chalkboard. So we're just going to delete that. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to add a new image and we'll choose this one just as an example. And then we're just gonna double click on that and go into the properties. So in the middle, it says full color. Now what we want to do is click on that drop down box and actually change that to outline. And then we're just gonna press okay. So as you can see, that looks a little bit more like it's just been done on a chalkboard. Now this won't work with every image. Some images will look better than others. Let's just try a different example. Now, so on the left hand side, we've got all these different categories. So I'm just gonna choose another example and let's have a look at alphabet and symbols. And I'm just gonna use this letter K. So again, by default, it's in blue. Now these letters don't actually look too bad to be honest, but in default, it's blue. Let's go into the properties, change that full color to outline. And again, that just gives us that chalkboard effect. So that's how we do the images. Now let's say you wanted to add some text as well. Let's choose the add text button. And we're just gonna type something in. Now the most important bit with this is to actually think about the color that you're using. So obviously we want to kind of go with a chalky color. So I'm just gonna choose that white. And then I'm just gonna press done. Now certain fonts will look better and probably more in line with that chalkboard and blackboard effect. But we'll go through, try different ones, see which one you prefer. One last thing we're gonna do is obviously when we press play on that, we're gonna get that little hand that will come up and draw that. And as you can see, they were using a Sharpie <laughs> to draw on the chalkboard. So let's just change the, uh, the actual pen that they're using as well. So if we go into the options for that text and we go to drawing hand, and we just wanna see if there's any chalk in here. Now I think if we click on this one, that looks like a little piece of white chalk. So let's have a look. And it is. So we'll choose that one, press OK, and let's just try that again. There we go. So that is how you do the blackboard and chalkboard effect in Videoscribe. And it just adds something a little bit different to some of your films. Hack number two is how to overlay animation onto the video footage. So this effect is really powerful if you combine your animations with other video formats. It's a great technique for explaining things in detail as you can effectively write over the top of your videos. So it's perfect for product explainers, but also an easy way to make your videos really stand out. 
Now technically this isn't all done in VideoScribe as that's just an animation tool. We need to combine it with a standard video editor that has got a chroma key or green screen feature such as Adobe After Effects, Final Cut Pro, iMovie, OBS or the one that I use which is called Filmora. Now the first thing we need to do is grab a screen grab of our video. Now it depends on what you're going to do here. You can basically have a look at the video and try and look for spaces that you can use like around the cat for example to put uh, right in to put images in. Or you can take a screenshot and freeze your video in time, which is a good way if you've got a product and you want to explain that product, you can freeze frame it and then put all your animations in around it. So I'm just going to set this to full screen. And I'm then just going to press print screen and grab a screen grab of that image. Now if you're using a Windows PC, you're going to want to take that screen grab and you're going to want to paste it into an actual file. So I'm just going to go here and press paste. And I'm just going to save that as an actual file that I could then import into VideoScribe. Now next we're going to jump into VideoScribe and we're just going to press the add image button. And I'm going to upload an image. And I'm going to upload the file that I've just created. Now what you need to do is make your image fill the screen. So you can use the little squares in the bottom corners to kind of drag it around and expand it or you can zoom in and zoom out, it's up to you. So there we go, that image is now taking up the full screen. And the reason we do this is so that you've got an idea of where you can put your animations. So for example, let's just add some text. I'm just going to change the font colour to white just so it looks a bit better on the darker video. I'm just going to place that up here. So like I say, you can see where I've got kind of space to, to work as well. I'm just going to change the timings quickly. And I'm just going to turn the hand off because I don't want to show the hand drawing it. But it's up to you, it's personal preference. And what I might do is just add an image as well by clicking the Add New Image button. I'm just going to use that image. So this is just an example to give you an idea. Now what I'm going to do is take the original image and just delete it. So as you can see we've just got two elements here. One of them is hard to see because it's white on a white background. That's the text and then we've just got this image. So what we want to do now is we want to colour the background in green and I'm going to show you why in a second. So we're just going to go up to the top and press background options and then click on the colour button down here. Now you can choose a green colour or we can use what's called this hex value. This is a chroma key green. So I'm just going to copy this hex value but if you want to write it down it's 00B140. I'm just going to copy that and go back to video scribe. I'm going to paste that hex value in here and I'm just going to press OK. Now that green's important and you're going to see why when we jump over to our video editor in a second. But first of all, let's just export that video. So I'm going to press the export button, I'm going to press download. I'm just going to name it something appropriate. Now, as I said earlier, you've got to use a normal video editor. In this case, I use Wondershare Filmora for most of my videos. Now Filmora isn't the best application for doing this, I have seen others that get better results but this is the one that I kind of use as my tried and tested normal YouTube editor and I quite like it so I'm just going to use this and show you exactly what you need to do. The process will be slightly different depending on what editor you use. So I've got my cat video already set up and now I'm just going to import the video that we've just exported from VideoScribe. Now in Filmora you work in these layers. So I'm just going to drag this down, I'm going to put it on top of the cat layer. Now because it's on top, all you're going to be able to see is the video scribe, the green screen. What we want to do is blend the two together and what we do is we use a thing called chroma key. So this is what Hollywood uses for a lot of special effects. When you see Superman flying around before CGI, they'd be using a green screen and they'd just put some kind of projected background onto it and it'd actually just be Superman in his cape, stood in a studio, not moving. So it's a similar technique. Now with Filmora, we double click on the green screen and we go to these options and there's a chroma key option. We tick that 
And then we have to tell it what type of green it is. And we do this by using this dropper symbol. Click on any of the green part. So that now automatically kind of takes the green away. So this doesn't work very well if you've got a lot of green in your actual animation, but in this case, we haven't. So this is almost then putting some like transparency on, on our uh, kind of top video so we can see the video underneath. Now, one thing you do need to do with Filmora is you need to play around with these offset, tolerance, thickness, and feather. Like I say, you've got to kind of, each video is different, but you've got to kind of play around with these. Some will show more detail, some will show slightly less. You've got to get it just right, and each video is different. Some of the other animators that I've seen are very, very good at this, and they need a little bit less input, but like I say, I like Filmora. So play around with them settings, and once you're done, just press export, and that's a really good way of getting your animations and videos to kind of work nicely together. Now before we jump into hack three and four, if you're a content creator looking to maximize your impact and income, then why not hit that like and subscribe button for more. Each time you do, a chocolate bar drops out the sky to feed my kids and gives me five minutes peace and quiet. And for that, I am forever grateful. So in hack number three, I'm gonna show you how to get unlimited custom images. Now included with your video scribe subscription are over 8,000 images, so a pretty good selection. Some of these are premium options that you only get access to if you take the upgraded offer. But what you will notice is that they're all illustrations and sometimes we want more than that. You may want to add real people or logos or just your own custom images. YouTube legend and fellow video scribe user Paddy Galloway does exactly this all the time as he tends to use photos of famous YouTubers and show how they grow their channel. So everything that Paddy does, I'm going to show you now. Now, first of all, we need to find a photo that we want to use. Now, you could upload your own from your phone, or you can search on Google and find Creative Commons images. And to do that, you just do a search on Google, go to Images, click on Tools, and click on Creative Commons Licenses. Now, generally, Creative Commons means that they're going to allow that picture to be used by other people. But there are different types of Creative Commons licenses, so just check which one. Let's use this one as an example. I'm just going to download that picture. Alternatively, you can use stock footage sites like Pixabay or Pexels.com, which have got literally thousands of photos that are free to use on your own videos. So find a photo that you want to use. You can do a quick search. Now I'm going to just use this one as an example. I'm just going to hit the download button. Now there's one thing that I need to show you, and I'm going to go back to Video Scribe just to demonstrate this. If we add a new image, and I'm going to add to the one that we've just downloaded, you'll notice that the original file was a JPEG. Now, the person itself isn't actually cut out of the background, so now we've got this awkward looking rectangle that's all the way around the picture. And we don't want that, we just want the person. That way that you can easily add your animations together without having these ugly rectangles kind of overlapping each other and just not looking right whatsoever. So I'm just going to delete that. Now there are two ways that we can remove that background. The first one is on Canva. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that picture that we downloaded into Canva. Now it's worth noting that this only works if you've got Canva Premium, which is a paid product. Canva do a free version and it's absolutely amazing. It gives you tons of features, but there's a little feature that we're going to use now and it's only available in premium. So if you don't want to spend any money on Canva, personally I do because I think it's absolutely brilliant. I use it all the time. But if you don't want to spend any money, stay tuned because in two seconds I'm going to show you a free way of doing it as well. Now what you do is you just highlight the image and then click on edit image. In there, there's a little feature called background remover and all we do is click on that. Now, as you can see, it's automatically kind of removed the background. Sometimes it makes mistakes and takes too much off or leaves too much on, and we can use these erase and restore brushes just to fine tune it. But that's done. All we need to do now is download it. And when we download it, we download it as a PNG file, because a PNG file allows transparency. And then you just tick transparent background. Now, I did say that I would show you a free way of doing this as well. So if we go to pixel art, and they've got a background remover. Now everything I'm showing you here, don't worry if you don't remember the names or anything, I'm gonna put the addresses below in the description. But if we go to open image, and then we select the image that's got the background on there, and press open, it will automatically do it. Now what I do find is that Canva's probably a little bit more accurate, but a little bit more slower as well. And like I say, you need the paid version of Canva to do it. 
But if we have a look under this guy's arm, it's left a little bit of the background in. But that's easy enough. We can click on fine tune and it gives us some options here where we can um, use like a magic tool. We can do it manually. We can add a bit in, remove a little bit. So I'm just going to take that softness off there and I'll just quickly show you. If we just click on that, see how it removes the background. Like I say, you can change the size as well. You can zoom in, zoom out. So it might just need a little bit more kind of messing around. We try the magic button as well. That should do it automatically. See how it's took a chunk of it out. But that's free. You don't need to pay anything to use that and it's still pretty good. Once you're done, just press download again. So now we've gone back to Video Scribe and I'm going to add a new image. I'm going to upload the one that we removed the background from. And as you can see, there's no grey background. And in fact, if we go up to background options and add a colour in, you can see there how it's kind of a, a perfect kind of cutout as well. And that's how you add your own custom images. So find the image through a free or paid stock site, take it into Pixlr or Canva, remove the background and upload it into Videoscribe. And it just gives you a lot more options in terms of images. So the last of these video scribe hacks is a really simple one. Now I've spoken to a lot of people who use this software, YouTubers, teachers and freelancers that create explainer videos for other people. Now a lot of them aren't aware that this feature exists and I wasn't to be honest. So it's really simple. All we're going to do is we're going to click on add new image. Now instead of adding another image on top of another one and it looking a bit scruffy, you can actually just erase parts out of the image so it looks like that you're correcting it. If you actually go to the search terms and just put erase, you'll see that there's two that come up that just look like a white square. Now these are basically how we can rub parts out and I'll show you what we do. There's two different ones. You can't really see it, but this one is a rectangle and this one has got um, kind of like a pattern to it. If I just put that over his jacket and just minimize it, you'll be able to see what I mean. There you go. So it looks a bit more of that kind of rubbing out motion. Your next step is to go into the properties by double clicking and then draw in hand. And if you look through the different hands, like if we click on Rosie, for example, you'll see there this one that's actually got an eraser or a rubber, whatever you want to call it, in the hand. So we can just choose that. Change the drawing options so it's a little bit quicker. And let's just preview that part. There you go. Probably a little bit too quick that. So I'm just going to delete that one and I'm just going to show you the other one because the other one's probably better when you're doing text. So again, we're just going to go to add an image. I'm going to type in erase and search. I'm going to pick the second one, which is the rectangle. And again, like I say, depending on what you're rubbing out, you can resize it. So if you see there where I've got the word erase, I'm just going to drag that, cover that up and set camera. And again, I'm just going to change the drawer in hand. I'm going to put this so that it looks like someone's actually rubbing it out. And then what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to add some more text after that. So if you think about it, this is the original text. We've just rubbed the word out and we're going to put the replacement word in. And let's just put the word delete just as an example. Resize that word so it looks like it kind of ties in with all the others and set camera. So let's just play that sequence. And there you go. It's as simple as that. Now Video Scribe is one of the easiest applications to learn, but I appreciate not everyone likes the technical side of creating videos. And if that's you, I would urge you to go and look on Skillshare. It's an amazing online learning platform where tons of content creators share their knowledge in the form of short courses. I'm spending way too much time on there learning about lots of new applications myself that can help me with my content. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the description that will get you a month's free access to all the premium goodness. So you can sign up, spend 30 days learning everything you possibly can about video scribe and more, and then cancel your subscription if you don't wish to keep it. Or like me, you might just love the content on Skillshare and keep it. Anyway, all of the links for everything we've discussed in this video are in the description below, and I'll see you on the next one.